In part one, I covered the mechanical construction of the gear shaper, using an old milling machine head that I converted to have precise rotary control of the spindle, using a stepper motor and worm gear reduction, and powered up and down motion of the ram, using a gear motor and linkage to drive the quill of the machine. The gear blanks to be cut will be held on this rotary table that I've already added a stepper motor to, and the whole lot attached to my existing small CNC mill. It's then just a matter of coordinating all the axes, and I should be able to cut things like internal and compound gears, which are difficult to make by other methods. The part I'm turning here is going to be my first test piece for shaping an internal gear. It's made of Delrin plastic, which is very easy to machine. The inner diameter matches the root diameter of the gear. It has an undercut below the tooth area to allow the cutter to pass through and leave somewhere for chips to fall so that the cutter doesn't jam at the bottom of each stroke. To control the motion I'm using the existing drives from my CNC machine that I've reallocated to each axis. The drives are controlled by Mac 3 running on a PC. The G code I need to write to cut the gear is very simple. This is the whole program. Only these three lines do the cutting, and this line does all the real work. I want to cut a 31 tooth gear, and I'm using an 8 tooth cutter. This means that if the gear rotates once, the cutter rotates 31 divided by 8, which is 3.875 times. The gear is on the A axis of my machine, and the cutter is on the reconfigured X axis. So if the A axis rotates 360 degrees, the X axis must rotate by 1395 degrees in the same time. The first line of G-code does a rapid move of the cutter to the edge of the blank. The second line feeds the cutter into the blank to the whole tooth depth at a rate of 3 mm per minute. The last line then rotates the blank and cutter together for one full rotation of the blank. Note that the feed rate here is in degrees per minute, not millimetres. And so cutting all the teeth. That's the theory anyway. Let's see if it works. That looks pretty good for a first attempt. It does look like the teeth might not be cut quite deep enough, probably because the plastic is flexing away from the tool. There's also a small amount of play in the rotary table when it's not locked. There's one problem with this method though. The blank and cutter are both turning continuously during the cut, and even when the tool is being retracted. I'm able to get away with this because the blank is only plastic, but if I tried to cut a steel gear like this, the rotary table would probably lose steps under the cutting force, and rotating the cutter into the work on the backstroke would wear it out very quickly, or even chip the points off. What really needs to happen is the blank and cutter should be stationary during the cut, and once the cutter has cleared on the upstroke, they should both reposition for the next cut before the cutter makes contact again. To determine when the cutter has reached a point where it's safe to advance the work, I made a sensor from a disc with a slot in it and an optical switch. The disc is mounted on the shaft of the gear motor and provides one pulse per revolution.
I've timed it so this occurs just after the cutter leaves the blank on the upstroke. This signal can be fed back to the PC, and it is possible to write a macro in Mac 3, which will wait for this pulse before proceeding to move. However, instead of one line of code to cut the entire gear, I now need two lines of code for every single stroke of the cutter. And this gear took over 1000 cutter strokes to make. I can put these two lines in a subroutine and call it multiple times. But it still makes writing the G code much harder. And since the feed rate depends on the size of each individual move, it's effectively hard-coded into the program and can't be changed on the fly. So I'd need to be sure of it before I even start. So this doesn't seem like a very good solution. So instead, I thought about putting a black box in between the PC and the drivers. This would store the continuous train of step pulses from the PC. And when it received the signal from the switch, release them all in one go. But it couldn't just dump them all at once. Each axis would need to accelerate and decelerate smoothly to avoid missing steps. So it would need to be a fairly sophisticated motion controller. Then I thought, if I'm going to do that, why not ditch the PC altogether and build my own dedicated controller? So that's what I did. Now I don't need to write any G code at all. Just enter the parameters for the gear and the cutter, and it works everything out and sends coordinated pulses to the CNC machine, only moving the blank when the cutter is clear. The feed rate can be varied at any time with this dial, and it even calculates the time taken to cut the gear. The way I constructed this is very similar to other controllers I've shown before. It's just an 8-bit microcontroller programmed in assembly language. Incidentally, after watching part one of this video, a number of people asked if I can vary the stroke length of the machine. I don't anticipate ever needing to do this. The stroke is fixed and set to a length suitable for any gear I'm likely to want to make. Also, since the stroke affects both the speed of the cutter and the cutting force, these must both be within a certain range, which is partly dictated by the speed and power of the motor. If I do ever want to change the stroke, I can do this by making another lever arm with the pivot in a different place, or even with a sliding pivot. I probably won't though. OK, this is going to be exactly the same gear, but this time in steel. I also designed the controller to combine the initial tooth depth cut with the rotary motion. This will help to take out any backlash there might be compared to feeding straight in and then starting to rotate. The movement you can see here is deflection. I think it's mostly play in the rotary table. It's probably not helped by the cutter not being the sharpest. The machine doesn't currently back off the cutter from the work on the upstroke. This is a feature I might add. It would be simple to move the table in the y-axis a few steps. I would probably have to add another rotary switch to detect when the cutter is at bottom dead center. Or I could just assume it always happens at the same time during each stroke as the motor only runs at one speed.
it can be quite hard to measure the size of an internal gear. One way to do it is to make a spur gear of the required size and see if it fits. This was a very tight fit and needed some force to push it in. The profile should match on the working part of the tooth with an equal amount of clearance at the root and tip. It's still slightly undersized, but the geometry looks very good and the surface finish is a big improvement over my attempts at gear skiving. As well as internal gears, I can also cut regular externally toothed gears by flipping this switch. All this does is reverse the rotation of one of the axes 